Hello, and welcome to the East Africa Business Podcast. I'm Sam Ploy, and I'm here on the continent to learn about the emerging business scene. I'll be interviewing startups, investors, and organizations who are all playing their part in helping the region develop and grow. And in doing this podcast, I'll be sharing with you the things I learned along the way. Coming from the UK, one of the biggest differences in East Africa has been how products are marketed. In the co-working space I was at in London, we would talk about Google ad campaigns and reaching users online through content marketing. Here, though, the radio is a dominant form of advertising. In this episode, I talked with Sudi, who runs Wave Records. We discussed his extensive experience in the radio industry, why old car radios can only play on restricted frequency, and listen to some of his catchy jingles, including a slightly interesting one about a Ugandan girl getting a Chinese boyfriend. We were in his recording studio, and so there might be a bit of activity slash phone interference going on in the background. And it also gets a bit echoey at the end, so I'm sorry about that. Hopefully it won't detract, though, from what was honestly one of the most unique interviews I've had. Here is Sudi. Cool. So this is, this is Sam. Over to you, Sudi. Yo, my name is Sudi. I'm uh, Dark Sudi, by the baby, alongside the sofa. I'm not going to We have records of salute alongside Morris. Yo, no one. Fidel G. Concept, you know what I'm saying? And uh, uh, they call him Ronnie. He's a good man. Cool. So we're here in the studio of Wave Records. Yep. Uh, I'm here with Sudi. Sudi, welcome to the show. Thank you, man. How's it doing? It's all good. It's all good. So, could you, just to get us started, could you tell us a bit about who you are and what Wave Records is? I'm called Dr. Sudi Wild Baby Lancer. I'm so fat and I'm here. You know, see the Lord Mayor and I'm here. And uh, my real names, I'm Governor Sudi Sentong of Zanganda. Those are my real names. Uh, Dr. Sudi is just uh, a name. You know, stage name and stuff like that, because I'm also a musician. Yeah. But are, are you actually a medical doctor? Or do you? No, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I would say I'm a medical doctor because I'm uh, an orthopedia, so something like that. Okay. Mm. All right, cool. But um, I really treat sound. Right now, I treat sound. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a specified in sound. Got so sound is your patient? Yeah, sure. Nice. And, and how long have you been doing Wave Records? Uh, Wave Records has been in existence for. Uh, two years now, and uh, me, I've been doing this for the last like 15 years. Okay. Yeah. So and some other production houses. I see. So why did you start Wave two years ago? Uh, two years ago, because I realized uh, it was high time for me to quit employment to start being uh, self-employed. I see. So yeah. who who employed you before? Before I was working with Summit Production. Okay. Yeah. And uh, were you? Excited about starting your new venture? Yeah, I was excited. Yeah. Yeah, what, what, yeah, why? Because I was going to earn the money by myself. Yeah. Put it in my pocket, direct in my pocket. Not not somebody trying to give me a share. Uh, you understand? A piece actually might give you a point of a whole number. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so far, has business been good? Yeah, business has been good because we trust in God. Okay. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and how many customers have you got with Wave Records? Uh, we have all the customers in the country. All of them? And how, how many is that? And very many. Yeah. You can't see this okay. number. Okay. Is it, is, is it like, I mean, are we talking... We have all the telecoms, we have all the banks, we have all the, you know, all the sorts of businesses. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and what, what do they come to you for? Uh, they come because we give them quality. And, and quality, what I mean, is it right, right? High, high creativity because we have our creative director, uh, Ron, right here, is our creative director. So he thinks about the scripts fast. Then, when it comes to recording, I record them with a lot of passion. We don't release something which is just half baked, we release something that is fully baked. Got it. Yeah. And just like this is radio commercials. Yeah, yeah. radio commercials and TV. And TV as well? Yeah, TV as well. Okay. Yeah. And so is this like a typical way for companies here to do marketing on the radio? Uh, yeah, people can do marketing on radio, but now like a company like ours, we don't have to do so. Mm. Oh, I, I mean for your customers. So yeah. when they come to you, is, is radio marketing just, just one of the, the things they do or do they do other? They do other others because uh, uh, our, f- our, our industry is quite big. The media industry is real big. So this is just a supplement. It's one other way of uh, advertising. But if you don't do it, you may not achieve uh, a certain number of profits, I would say. Your targets might not come out like you really want them to. 
I see. So do you have any idea what is the return on investment of a radio commercial? So if, if I spend uh, $2,000 mm -hmm. on a on a radio on a radio commercial, how much am I going to get back? To it depends on what project uh, what product you're selling. Uh, if I give you an example of a telecom company, he might do an ad for let me say one thousand dollars, and uh, in the end he makes because uh, they actually they actually the real figures out usually say they make seven billions a day. Uh, that would be like uh, one and a half million dollars a day, okay. something like that. And is it possible to say... So they make a lot of returns. Yeah, is it possible to say that is because of radio in, radio of How How can you tell that? Uh, I can tell that because people we do catchy and memorable uh, radio commercials and TV commercials. So you find that everyone is the talk of the town. It's like a song. We usually term it, it's a, we term those ads are, adverts as a hit. You know, like a hit song. So you find that the adverts usually compete with the, with, with the songs. See. Yeah. So you find that everyone is informed of the product these guys are selling through the commercials. So that makes us uh, an, uh, that makes us a pillar into their earning. See. Yeah. And do you get this? Is this just an impression you get from talking to people, or is there a way of quant uh, quantifying? There is a way because we have a company called Ipsos that does uh, research. Yeah, it does research and brings out the results, and we always take the results because it's a certified company. All right. And so, yeah. so what, what sort of questions do they ask to, to find this out? Uh, they ask over what product you know, what you know, things like that. And you know, how did you get to know the product? Like I had it on radio. What does it show? <laughs> See, got it. Yeah, because we that means we reach to we reach those people more than any other kind of advertising, uh, I would say, style. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, mm. So, do does everyone listen to the radio here in Uganda? Uh, I would say ninety three percent of the people listen to radio. Ninety three percent. What about the other seven percent? Uh, they read maybe the papers or some don't even read. Okay. Yeah, because uh, everyone can afford a radio a radio in uh, in in Uganda. Yeah. And so, is it the sort of thing where, is it just on in the background, when people are doing their everyday? Yeah, or sure. People have it in the car. Like what's the? Yeah, when the car taxis. But the biggest number of people who listen to radio listen to radio in the taxis. That's why we have uh, we have uh, uh, radio stations that uh, make most. Uh, I would say, okay, some some are out of that close, but we have the, a close gap of from eighty eight point zero to ninety, because where that's where a car radio stops, uh, and or an old car, an old fashioned car, would like they've. Uh, modified that cars go beyond 90. So what do you mean 90? The frequency. Oh, I see. Yeah. So where, you see, the radios around there make more money because they have the most listened to ratings. Yeah. Yeah, because people are sitting in taxis and those are the taxis. The taxis yeah, just uh, roll up to that frequency. I see. So in the old cars, they only have the frequency yeah. 88 to 90. And then the new cars, what does it go up to? Uh, the new cars, they go beyond uh, 90 to 100, but... Usually people don't flip to that side unless they really love that station okay. beyond the 90. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this might be a silly question. Why does it start at 88? I just don't know. Is it? Honest. Okay, it goes, it doesn't start at 88. It even goes into 79 and something. Okay, like but, but why does it not? Uh, that's, it's a bit technical. Oh, but is, is really it? I really don't have an idea why. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, Cool. But so the so how many radio stations exist between eighty eight and ninety? Uh, I really don't have a real figure about that. But uh, in Kampala, uh, all urban centres, I know of like uh, thirty radio stations, right? Yeah. yeah, thirty. Okay, and that and that's between eighty eight and yeah, one hundred. Like every point has a radio station. Okay. Yeah. And uh, are there some stations that are bigger than others, or yeah, of are, are they all kind of the same? No, they're not the same. Yeah. So according to your programming, see some have poor programming, so they're not big. Some are like real good programming; they're big. All right. Yeah. What do people find is a makes a good program? It's according to how your program directors is, you know, uh, setting up the radio station. But is it sort of are people after good music or are they listening to the to the people words? love both? You don't can't, you can't just take music. Even a DJ in club would be better than a radio but you know you have to supplement the radio presenters have to be good 
The music has to be good. The quality of music you're playing has to be good. Yeah, you can't just play on a, a song you got from a cassette and uh, you know loaded it on a CD and you think people will love that quality from the other original and got from an LP, something like that. See, and uh, and is it that are there any sort of like radio celebrities, the radio presenters? Are they are yeah. they kind of like well known? We even have one here, Ronnie. He's a radio celebrity. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I've been uh, on radio. And I've, I've, I've been on radio. Yeah. <laughs> ever since I was twelve years. Since you're twelve years old. Yeah. Well, so. So uh, you know you can't ask like I would say you can't ask ten people and you don't find six who know me. Right. Yeah. And uh, the only way we gain out of that is by let me say hosting some big shows and one. Yeah. Mm. Got it. And uh, and so you, even today you do. Your own radio show? Uh, I no longer do radio. I resigned mm -hmm. uh, five months back. Five months. Why did you resign? I just got tired. Been doing this for a long time. Yeah. Uh, to give way for like some new blood to come in. Got it. Yeah. And uh, and so did you find that having this background in radio made it easier when you were doing? Wave yeah, because your yeah, your experience is the best. Yeah, you know how to do it. You know, well, if you're late, you know how to. You get your your people back onto your station listening and you know stuff like that. Yeah, nice. You know how to maneuver over everything. Sweet. Mm. And uh, and when you were setting up Wave Records, mm. um, what was the biggest challenge that you felt? We, I would say we had no challenge because we were very ready. Me and Ronnie, we set up web records and we were very ready because we knew what is coming, we knew what, what we're supposed to do. We've been in the business for a long time, so it wasn't a surprise. Okay. Yeah, so we didn't find any challenge. All right. Yeah. And uh, and even today, two years on? Yeah. No challenges? No challenges. Okay. We're going on. Before Wave Records existed, mm. how did these telecom companies how did they record their radio commercials? They used to record from other production houses. Like I told you earlier, I was working for some other media houses. Yeah. So I used to produce the same clients, uh, like in those other production houses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They still exist. We still have competition. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So it's just that they, the, you know, the, the clients have now gone from the old companies to... Uh, clients don't usually follow machines. They follow the producers, yeah, because they know you. You the quality doesn't depend on the machines you use. The quality depends on the creativity you have. So they will look for your creativity. Yeah. That's so, so um, what is your? Can you talk me through your typical creative process? So, how if a if a new client comes to you, how would you go about ensuring they have a really high quality commercial? I first, uh, I first analyze and get to know what is the product this client is selling to the public what is the target audience how do you want me what's your budget because it uh, you know your budget matters a lot so i have clients who come here they want to do commercials and i end up not doing commercials because not because of their budget but maybe their target audience is not that radio listening audience yeah you, uh, you know you can you can reach those clients you can reach those uh that audience through there is a media you go through the papers you know you go through the posters and you reach them so we first analyze what are you selling whom are you targeting and how do you want us to deliver that yeah so we don't we don't just like because there are clients come with a big budget we wake up like oh, we are gonna do this no we are so professional that we have to first analyze the three okay uh, let's assume that we've decided that the target market does listen to the radio, mm. and that you know my budget is good. How do you then? What happens next? Uh, what we do uh, there, we first uh, like we've uh, already like sorted out uh, which client, which are uh, which audience we're going to reach out to. Uh, we create according to that audience. The creativity has to roll out to the, the, that audience. If it's a corporate class, sometimes they don't need those catchy radio ads. Those uh, funny ads with skits. They might need like a one voiceover because they can listen to them the ad once and they understand. Yeah, but that those other class, the, or that the, the, this other class of, what, of our audience that usually has to get something catchy. You know, when he laughs, it's like, oh, that ad is funny. They're like, oh, but what are they selling? You understand? 
So those ones also, so we analyze and know, now this is, a, this is the audience we're going for. So you may find that one campaign has like four radio ads and playing on different radio stations. Yeah, one radio ad is playing on say, we have a local radio station and then they will have another corporate radio station, something like that, a radio for the youth, because we have like a four radio stations that are targeting the youth locally and uh, even uh, this other corporate world. Yeah. yeah. And so do you do this, so do you and Ronnie, do you do this at the, at the, client, at the client's office or do they come to you or what's the creative process? Uh, usually we do it here. Okay. And of course we have, a, we have another, another office just behind this place that, that is our creative section where we sit and uh, brainstorm. Nice. And do you have, let's say, you, let's say you're looking to design on, with a catchy jingle, mm-hmm. uh, do you, do you have like a bit of a, do you have like an instrument where you sort of create the jingle? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. We, we're already bringing a keyboard and right now you can find it. Mm-hmm. And we'll play back, you know, sing along, get good voices, get people talents, they come in, they sing. So we present it to the client if they like it. We take it, they can say, okay, can play you one. This is an audio. Yeah, go on. I'm just going to play you one. Sounds good. So we, we've just, uh, it's not yet on air. All right. But we've been like creating it over and over again, and I believe this was the final take that the client really liked. Uh, okay, just a second. It's an Afrisel jingle. Yeah. Afrisel is a telecom company mm-hmm. in Uganda. In Yeah, that is pretty catchy. Yeah, so I'm approved. You've had my voice in there. The guy starts at three, two, one. Then the office, uh, the most affordable network. Now it's me still. Nice. Yeah, then we had some other talents in here. So we, we even do radio commercials. I can play some if you wish. Uh, yeah, let's just do one, yeah. Yeah, I'll play this. So the now we have this was a fun And we are in London. And so, so that was just a, that was that a was just this a radio ad. Yeah. It's an active one. So these are the catchy ones. Yeah. Uh, the one that goes to that uh, urban and uh, local market for a catchy pr- uh, purpose. So that's a telecom too. So yeah. like I told you, we were, we do work for all telecoms. I can play MTN is the biggest telecom and Airtel. We also do for Airtel. I actually came up with the the theme that took Uganda cranes, our football team to the AFCON. Uh, AFCON is uh, the Africa Cup of Nations. Yeah, we, so I, I'm the one who created it, the Roomba, Turumbe. Awesome. Turumbe. I also have the jingle, I would play it, but it will take a lot of time. I <laughs> say <laughs> like, cool. Yeah, so uh, we do all the work. Yeah, nice. And, uh, and so when you are getting people to sort of do the voiceovers, mm-hmm. how do you find someone to do the voiceover? Uh, usually, uh, I would say I'm not, I'm not priding someone saying they pride over that, but I'm good at spotting talent. 
Very, very good. Yeah. I just look at, I can talk to you and I know that you have the ability to do this. You have the acting ability and uh, some you recognize the voice. Someone has a very good voice, you bring them, you teach them. Because yeah, we don't have like, uh, we don't have schools that, schools of art, schools of acting and stuff like that. So you just spot out a road talent, you come and train it here. I see. And so are these people, like, do you meet them on the streets? Like, how do you... No, friends. Okay. Some you meet on the streets. If it's really sounding nice, you get the number. Yeah. Be like, hey, I'll call you for business. No. Yeah. And so how does the contract work? Is it like a day rate or what? Uh, it's always like par, not a day rate, but par, par commercial. Okay. Yeah. And in rough terms, how much, does it co how much do they get paid? It depends how, what, what is your class and how what's your good, what's your bargain. Now me, um, uh, I get more money, he gets more money, Ronnie gets more money. And uh, because we've been in the business for a long time, this is a voice that will sell your stuff well, better than a newcomer. Okay. Whereby uh, the client will put it on a radio station or TV and will know people are going to recognize that because they know these people. They'll be like, hey, what are they selling now? Because we've been in the industry for a long time. So we, we, uh, we demand for a bigger pay than any other, like other newcomers in the business. Got it. Okay. Sure. And are your commercials at the moment, are they just in Uganda or do they go to other countries? We, we, we do for, I would say, Africa. I've even done backlays for Britain. Yeah, it came to the UK, so we don't we are we're not limited. Yeah. Yeah. Last time, uh, three weeks back, I was doing Unilever for the UK. Yeah. All right. Well, what was the what was the advert? I was working with an agency called Williams. Okay. Yeah. Our, an advertising agency. It was uh the 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 a brand, a, a new brand of uh, of geisha, geisha soap. So, but they wanted to use an African talent. So that means I've done international work too, sir. <laughs> nice. Yeah. And uh, and how did you get in touch with, with Williams or with Unilever? They always like look for the best around the country. And guess what? I was the best. Yeah. Huh. So they came to me. I've done a lot of work. I've done, uh, besides Barclays, besides Unilever, I've done Airtel Africa. Uh, we've done uh, uh, Movit. Movit goes around the region, Eastern Central Africa. I've done, uh, there's another telecom called Smart Telecom for the Ango, Ango, uh, Francophone, Francophone, the French speaking countries in Africa. I've done Airtel, Airtel, has, Airtel was Airtel African, Airtel, Airtel French and English. Yeah. Cool. And uh, when you look at sort of the industry, yeah. are there any other business opportunities that you, that you can see? Yeah, there are a lot of business opportunities besides advertising. Well, is it related to advertising? Are there any that you see? Oh, related. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are a lot. Like uh, uh, billboards. That's a good business. There are a lot of a lot of stuff. So, so what uh, what is the opportunity with billboards? And billboards. You just hook up with the ad advertising agencies and you get it. They make a lot of money. Yeah. yeah. Once you. Because we can already monitor the, the campaigns. If you're done with the campaign of a radio, you follow it up. You're like, hey, you can you send me the billboards I work, I work on them too? But I'm not so good at graphics. <laughs> so that means I'll employ another graphic designer. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. What's the, uh, what is the most fun you've had with any radio commercial? The most fun. The most fun. Fun? Yeah. Uh, with a radio commercial? Yeah. Man, I've done a lot of really commercials. Can't recall any. <laughs> okay. Because uh, okay, the most exciting, I would say, that I've done. Yeah, we've done a lot. Okay. Yeah. Because I've done over a million radio ads. A million radio ads. Yeah. That, I mean, that is mental. That's. Because on an average, in a week, I do over a hundred and fifty radio ads. A hundred and fifty radio ads a week. Yes, a week. So for the last ten years, count it. Do the math. It's crazy. So. That's, I mean, that sounds like loads, 150 words. Yes, because we do in a lot of languages. I see. In our native, because we do it in English and then translate it to other languages. Ah, I see. Our native. How many, so let's say for the we have for the over, airtime. We have over 36, 36. I know there are like 54 languages spoken okay. in Okay. So for the Airtel one, you mm -hmm. just saw? So the, so the AfriCell one, we just heard? The AfriCell was translated in... Uh, in six languages. Six languages. Yeah. Okay. And is it and so the each person is 
doing the translation? Yeah, or do you we get, get different, different people to do those translations. Yeah. Because yeah. I don't speak all languages, I speak like four languages. See. Yeah. So we get people from those native uh, regions and they, they do those. Got it. Yeah. Okay. And uh, since, you, since you started, what has been the biggest surprise in running the business? Uh, like I told you, I've been in the business for a long time and uh, I always know what is going to happen. So I don't find no surprises. Okay, there's, not, there's been nothing yet that has yeah, surprised sure. you. Because well, I think what would surprise me is someone to ask me to give him an ad for one million dollars. Do you find that uh, there are different types of customers that you're getting? Or is it, how, how can I say, if you were to look at when you first started doing radio commercials uh, and you looked at the types of customer who came to you, uh, like what, what has changed in, that, in the time from then until now? Uh, social media has killed us a little bit. So our clients usually don't. Uh, sometimes uh, there are campaigns they don't put on radio. Yeah, they use social media. So that's the challenge. We still have more clients than these days. Uh, uh, class, so they actually there are the same classes that are still available, but they no longer advertise like they used to before social media was uh, booming. Uh, before Facebook, before Twitter, before uh, what's the other platform? Instagram, you know. But really, it's WhatsApp and Facebook that has really killed our business. I see. Yeah. And if you look to the future, do you think that will get more so or less so? I believe it will get more. Because <laughs> it's, it's an easier way of advertising. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you just form a group and send in an ad. That ad will, will, will go viral. Yeah. In just 10 minutes, you find that. 10,000 people know about the product you're selling. 10,000 people in 10 yes, minutes? through a group. Really? So how does it work? on WhatsApp or Facebook. So you just create a group and then... Yeah, you create a group, uh, add people. If they accept being uh, being added on and they don't leave, you find that whatever you post, everyone is watching it. It's popping on the phone. All right. Popping on the laptops. Yeah. And so uh, how do you compete with that? We shall wait and see what God brings. If he says we get out of business, then he will create another path for us. I see. <laughs> yeah. uh, and and when um, but when Acrisel come to you and they're like, uh, you know, I'm thinking maybe we do a radio advert, maybe we do not. Mm-hmm. How do you convince them that doing a radio ad is is the right thing to do? Uh, we usually go by uh, statistics, because like I told you, still people listen to radio, so they really need radio. And not in Uganda, not everyone has gone to school to start using those social media uh, platforms. So that means we are still available for some very good time. See? Yeah. Because I believe all the, that the, the 75% of people who have not gone to school, they are not going to go to school tomorrow. But they will still use the radio. Yeah. See? Yeah. Cool. So we'll just do a few more questions, yeah. if that's all right. When it comes to people listening to the radio, yeah. Is it sort of coverage all over the country, or are there just pockets where, are there some places where it kind of isn't done at all? No, apparently today we have, uh, we have radio stations in every region in this country. Uh, the government of Uganda has uh, all regions, are like a, a radio station per region, the government of Uganda alone. Then we have we, the entrepreneurs, the businessmen who make the radios, and we also make radios in the, to compete with the government in those other regions. Yeah. So it is, uh, I would say, uh, every region has a radio. So that means every region is affected with us. Every region has a TV station now. So that means we are still working, we are still in the business. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, do the public radios are they like how can I say in England the BBC is like the most popular radio okay. and then and then you have the privately owned ones are sort of still still good but mm. the, the the public one has is kind of like the most popular mm. is that the same here or is it the private ones that are more popular uh, here the public radio is uh, I want to use the word but it's the worst yeah due to <laughs> the bureaucracy in the in the leadership of that radio station but the private radios are doing very, very well for the last 20 years. They've been doing very well. Yeah. Mm. 
They're the biggest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The government radio can't even say anything when those ones uh, start to like grow them. Nice. Yeah. And uh, if you were to look forward over the next sort of six months to two years, how would how is Wave Records going to look different? Uh, it's going to look different in the, I would say, the infrastructure. Yeah. The people, well, the quality of sound, the production, we're, we're really improving in everything. How are you, are you getting more, more, more kits? Like what's the, how are you improving those things? Uh, we're going to employ more people. Okay. Yeah, so we're getting new ideas. Yeah. We're going to, you know, change the looks of the studio, yeah, change the looks of uh, the location still. Yeah. So it's going to look better. Nice. Mm. And if people are sort of like listening at home, how, how can they follow uh, what Rave Records is doing? Do you do, you do things on social media or do you not like to use social media? Maybe no, just contact us on our cell phone numbers. Yeah? Yeah. And do, do you have a website? No? Uh, we're building a one. Good one. So it's in the process right now. And it's to... Great stuff. Yeah. Cool. But well, we have an email address. You can yeah. contact us. Yeah. On webrecordsmp5 at gmail.com. Awesome. Web records, MP5, as in like MP4 or MP3, but it's saying it's MP5 at gmail.com. Nice. Why is it MP5? Yeah, it just felt like uh, advancing the technology. <laughs> <laughs> nice, cool. Well, Sidi, thanks so much. You're welcome. Cheers, <laughs> Before we head, just a quick moment to say thank you for listening. You can see the show notes of this episode by heading to samfloor.com forward slash podcast and then searching for the episode title. That's S-A-M-F-L-O-Y dot com forward slash podcast. Now, a few people have got in touch and have been asking about how this podcast came about. And well, it all started when I took a one-way flight to Rwanda to seek out business opportunities across the region. I'm now at the stage of formulating a bit of a plan of the business I want to go into based on all of these podcast interviews and we'll be keeping a record of what I get up to on my blog. And so if you're interested in being kept in the loop, you can sign up to the newsletter there. Again, it's samfloy.com. Also, if you have any questions, comments, or feedback about the podcast, or indeed anything, please feel free to email me, podcast at samfloy.com, and I'd be very happy to chat. In any case, have a great week, and speak to you soon.